My two kids worked in the greenhouse. That's where they were exposed to the water when the river flooded. And because they gave them water to drink from the well in the river, they shut down the wells from the towns but never closed that one. The men in Blanca Ruiz's family work as day laborers on a farm. Her youngest son, Jonathan, was 16 when he first got sick. A few days later is when I started to have the stomach ache and the fatigue. We went to the hospital, they kept me there for a while, and they told me it was parasites. Three months later, government officials visited the family after reviewing Jonathan's medical files. They tested his blood for heavy metals, his health got worse, and the results never came. There were times that he wouldn't tell me. I saw him grabbing his stomach and curl up his body. Authorities found arsenic, manganese and aluminum, among other toxins in the river. It was a toxic bomb. Practically all metals have a toxic effect in the body at different concentrations. Hector Duarte Tagles is an environmental health specialist at the University of Sonora. He says these chemicals could contaminate not only the river, but the water wells supplied by its waters. There is a high risk if people begin their treatment late. The longer some contaminants are in the organism, the more difficult it is to get rid of them. Government officials open a temporary treatment center seven months after the spill. It's in Nordes, Mexico, four hours away from the mine. And it was here that eight months after being exposed to toxic water, Jonathan first received treatment. The unit director is Joel Lopez Villagomez. We've identified 360 people with confirmed cases that were in contact with the water of the river and have health problems. Once someone is referred to a specialist, they decide whether or not a blood metals test will be conducted. When they diagnosed Jonathan, they said it was manganese and that he'd be monitored for 10 to 15 years with studies every three months. If the government knew there were so many affected, because they knew what was happening, why didn't they take actions right away? Adolfo Garcia Morales, then a Sonora delegate to the Secretary of the Interior, says they have and continue to take action. The epidemiology unit opened recently, but that doesn't mean that we haven't been providing care to the population. We've been inviting people to have the necessary tests conducted. Mexican officials say they are monitoring chemical levels in the water and that it's now safe to drink. I would say that they have to do studies on all the people on the Sonora River, each family, because everybody's sick. Even if we weren't directly in contact with the river, the water that's coming through the tap is bad. The recent spill drew attention to outdated water quality standards in Mexico. The Mexican norm for arsenic, one of the chemicals found in the Sonora River, is two and a half times the acceptable limit set by the World Health Organization and the Environmental Protection Agency in the U.S. Las autoridades han señalado the authorities have said numerous times that the pollutants are below the maximum amount allowed. That's a play on words. Just to say that it is below the maximum limit creates a false sense of security. Environmental and ecology professor Reina Longoria tested six residents drinking from wells close to the river and found arsenic in their blood 10 to 19 times the recommended limit. Her test results validated fears from residents following the spill, but she believes the problem is systemic. The water is harmless, according to the norm. But if we look at the blood results, we find arsenic in their bloodstream. Longoria and other academics share their findings with Mexican officials who said they are trying to update the norms for several chemicals in water, not just arsenic, but the government denies that its water quality standards had put people's health at risk. I couldn't say that it is negligence. 
I'm not an expert on the subject, but what is true is that we live in a state where there is a rule of law, and while the law we have might not be the best, it is finally the one that is in effect. Who cares if we're poor and only eat beans? It's better than being like this. We're sick, and we don't even know what will happen at the end of the day. They can say it's all good and that he's improving, but truth be told, we don't know. Last year, Mexican health officials presented legislation to bring Mexican norms for water and salt quality into compliance with international standards. The proposal is still pending. For the Fronteras Desk, I'm Valeria Fernandez with the Arizona Center for Investigative Reporting.